So you know, a critical part of having all these companies for you to be the founder of 10, 12 mm -hmm. companies simultaneously, you have to get great people to be co-founders and to become CEOs. Um, what is it you're looking for when you when you hire in a CEO mm -hmm. or a co-founder? So once I have an idea for a company and I've decided I want to do it, <clears throat> then I try and look for two things. One is that someone whose background fits the most important aspect uh, of this company, which is generally going to be product, broadly defined. Because the first two years, you're not monetizing that much. You're not even marketing that much. You are actually, from the start, creating a product and getting product market fit. If you don't have that, nothing else matters. So if it's an editorial, a, a content company, I'm going to want someone who can do that. If it's a technology company, often they have a technology background. And if it's more of an internet, e-commerce type company, then it's going to be a traditional product background. So I want them to have the expertise of the most important thing, the most critical aspect of that company. The second thing is in a competitive environment where everyone can work at 20 other places, this has to be a CEO people want to work for. Mm -hmm. And so the people who want to work for them are going to do reference checks, and I'm going to do reference checks and find out, did people like this person? Do they respect this person? Do they want to work for them? But you traditionally haven't hired people from the industry that you're targeting the company at. So I traditionally hire someone who's from the internet startup world, but may is may not be from that specific sub vertical. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is at, at Zola. My two co-founders were people that worked at Gilt, which was very similar. Mm -hmm. But in many of the other ones, uh, not necessarily. But they have worked for startups, and I think that skill is interchangeable, uh, even if it doesn't come from that exact domain. And when you when you look at somebody who's worked for a startup but not in that industry, you don't usually look for somebody from one of the big companies or an established player or any of those things? Generally not. I, I almost never have I hired someone from Google or Facebook or Amazon. You or know, Procter & Gamble. Or, or definitely yeah. not. Or definitely not Procter & Gamble or Ford or something like yeah. that. That I would I would have a bias against. There's just a very, it's, you know, these are smart people, but they have been trained for three to five or eight or 10 years in making decisions in a way that's very different. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of support. They have no idea how the option program was created. They had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. They had committees. They took a long time to make decisions. Uh, there was just a lot of support on everything. CEO's got to make all those decisions and got to make them fast and faster than you would like. Mm -hmm. So... So if you don't get it from there, if you don't get people from there, you're taking a chance on somebody. Yes. It's typically, they're taking some kind of step up yes. uh, in their responsibilities. The, yeah, the typical candidate for me would be someone who's, let's say, was a VP of product or marketing or technology at, you know, a, it could be a Blue Apron, it could be a Gilt, it could be a, a Casper, it could be some internet company mm -hmm. in New York. That would be the, the, the most traditional type of person I would hire. And when you get them in, is there any kind of training, support? You know, the, what's the scaffolding you put around them to make sure they're successful? So there's, there's less than you would think. I mean, you know, that person and I are going to spend time together, yeah. but they've got to be able to figure out the industry. They're going to be the product expert. So the first thing they're going to do, if this is very early on, is they're going to interview, you know, 100 uh, customers. So at Zola, for example, Shan and Nobu, my two co-founders, they didn't do a thing until they had interviewed 50 or 100 brides. They needed to understand before we built anything, what were the pain points, what do people like, what do they not like, and just be in the head of that customer. Then they, they hired a CTO, engineers, and started building that product.